Let me tell you some. Green tea. I am now in perfect harmony with my surroundings. And that's exactly what we're gonna be looking at. The surroundings here on these motherboards, X399 VRMs. We got the Aorus X399 Extreme. We've got the ASRock Tai Chi. We've also got the Creation, the Meg. This is MSI's top of the line. I think it's literally the most expensive X399 motherboard out there. And we've also got the Zenith Extreme from ASUS. Paired with a 2990WX 32 core 64 threaded processor, overclocked to 4 gigahertz. And at 4 gigahertz, this thing can push over 400 watts through those VRMs. Now, this is crazy because this puts out a lot of heat. And if you're in the market for an X399 motherboard and you're interested in getting the 32 core processor, one must ask which of these motherboards is up to the task. Now, today, we're also going to be putting a 12 centimeter fan on each of these VRMs and seeing the before and after temperatures, but also testing out ASUS's Zenith Extreme uh, 40 mil fan kit as well and seeing if that makes a difference. But with that aside, what are we waiting for? I mean, we can wait for me to finish my green tea. Are you unlike me and you actually know how to solder properly? Well, if you are, then PCB Wave, today's video sponsor, is giving 10 PCBs for as little as $5. And if you're a new member, you can get $5 off. So what are you waiting for? Get these high quality PCBs. Links in the description below. Welcome back to Tech Yesterday. Right here, we've got four different X399 motherboards, all top of the line. And today we're chucking a 12 centimeter fan on the VRM heat sinks. As we said in the intro, 32 cores. This thing can put out some serious heat. Let's get straight into the details. First up, the ASRock Tai Chi. Comes in at 325 US dollars. So it's the cheapest of the bunch here. Eight plus three phase power design. And when we had the VRM being stressed with no fan initially on the heatsink, we got up to 118 degrees. That was what was being realized with the thermal imaging camera. And also the heatsink itself was uh, posting around 65 degrees. And the ambient conditions here in the Tech Yes Studio was about 23 degrees through all the testing here. So a controlled environment too. And when we put the 12 centimeter fan on the Tai Chi's heat sinks, we then dropped those temperatures down to uh, 58 degrees on the heatsink itself. But uh, ironically enough, the VRMs didn't really show any difference. I still managed to see 117 degrees on the back end of the board itself. So the 12 centimeter fan is making a difference and we will see that in the next three results, but it made the least difference on the Tai Chi. But another interesting thing is that the Tai Chi was the only motherboard here to survive 10 minutes without uh, having a hardware failure with no 12 centimeter fan mounted on top of the heat sinks. Uh, but next up here, we've got the Gigabyte X399 Extreme. This is their new board. It's coming in at 450 US dollars. You've got a 10 plus three phase VRM design and initially with no fan on the heatsink, we got 70 degrees on the heatsink and 133 degrees on the VRM. I couldn't believe what my eyes were seeing, but we also didn't get it to 10 minutes, it failed. And then we placed the fan on that heatsink and then re-ran the test. So we let the heatsink cool down for 10 minutes. Then we put it back on. We saw 111 degrees max on the VRM and also 55 degrees on the heatsink itself. So this board responded extremely well to having a 12 centimeter fan mounted over the top of those heat sinks. And now they do have fins installed. And this is one thing I do like about the Aorus X399 Extreme board. I'd like to see the other manufacturers following suit and doing the same because not only does it look really cool, but as we see here in the results, it does definitely help when it comes to cooling down that VRM. And next up here, we've got the Meg Creation from MSI. Their new board introduced with the Threadripper 2000 series TR4 CPUs. And this with the 2990WX. And with no fan over that heatsink initially, we're looking at 98 degrees on the VRM and 57 degrees on the heatsink. So this was running the coolest of the bunch. And this was from the thermal imaging camera. Mind you, the heatsink is the biggest one that is on all the boards here. And so I'm imagining that there is some more heat that we can't see underneath this heatsink because this board did fail before we reached it to 10 minutes. However, the VRM is the beefiest of all four motherboards here, featuring 16 phases or 16 plus three phases for 19 in total. 
and it definitely shows when we had that 12 centimeter fan running over the heat sinks it did drop quite considerably 78 degrees then on the vrm and then 46 degrees on the heat sink itself so this responded very well to having a cooler master blue led fan over that vrm heat sink i guess perhaps maybe leds do make things run cooler also with the Meg Creation board, it's coming in at 500 US, so it is the most expensive out of the bunch here by $50. And last up here, we've got the X399 Zenith Extreme from Asus. This is coming in at $450, features an 8 plus 3 phase VRM. And when we had no fan sitting on that heatsink, we were looking at 121 degrees max. That's what we saw on the actual heat with the thermal imaging camera and on the heatsink itself, 81 degrees. When we placed this 12 centimeter fan, we just gently laid it down on top while I was sipping some green tea, because I had a little bit of time to spare. We then saw a drop to 94 degrees on the VRM, 50 degrees on the heatsink. This was the biggest drop on all four boards here, but they also have the option to get this kit, and this includes this real little 40 mil fan. And now when I looked at this thing initially, I thought, is this really going to do anything for like what's 400 watts coming out on the CPU? And to my surprise, no, it really didn't do anything. Uh, we saw a VRM from 121 degrees now to 118 degrees. And then the heat sink that dropped from 81 degrees to 70 degrees. So there was a bigger drop there because it was pretty much placed on top of that heat sink. Uh, so in terms of its actual functionality, it's not really doing a whole lot. And I guess that now brings us to conclusion time, where if you are getting a 32 core CPU, an X399 motherboard, and you're overclocking, then you would seriously want to consider getting some uh, fans, or at least one fan, on top of your VRM heatsink. That's what's come out of today's results, because three of the boards, the Zenith Extreme, the Aorus Extreme, and also the Meg Creation, they failed without this fan on top. And this was only 10 minutes. Imagine if you're doing work for 20 minutes or longer and you need to get work done faster, hence why you're overclocking. And then you also need to get uh, stability, which is kind of, I mean, it's a little bit ironic, but the world we live in now gives options to do that. And that's what X399 is. It's an option for high-end desktop enthusiasts, just like Intel's X299, where you want more cores and more threads and you want the single thread performance, but you want the ability to still do multitasking and high powered production. But on the flip side, the good news is that if you don't have a fan and you're not overclocking, you're just going with out of the box settings with the 2990WX, then all four of these motherboards will be absolutely fine because the power draw won't be anywhere near the near 400 watts that we were seeing when we were at four gigahertz. So it does put out a lot of heat. It's the most heat that I've seen for anything that's even water or air related. Of course, LN2, you're gonna be using up a lot more power but that's not a discussion for someone using this in a work environment. Uh, but ultimately with the pricing, the Tai Chi is coming out well ahead. However, they do have their professional gaming option. Features the same VRM, but it features a 10 gigabit NIC, but it's coming in with the best value for money on X399 in my opinion, if you just want VRM goodness. But before I get on out of here, I will say some critiquing points. Uh, MSI include this thing here. It's like a graphics card looking uh, NVMe cooling solution with four sockets that you can plug into the PCI Express 16 uh, X slot and that'll give you essentially four NVMe options to do whatever you want. But instead of including things like this, I'd like them to spend their money that they're charging for the motherboard on things like a uh, better implementation of the VRM perhaps, uh, make it a fin, fin design so the heatsink doesn't uh, cut out after 10 minutes when you're overclocking because I'm sure people buying this motherboard really want it for the best of the best. And when the Tai Chi in ways, I feel like it not cutting out after 10 minutes is in ways a slight victory for the Tai Chi, which is coming in considerably less money. I feel like that's a bit of a letdown. But at the same time, I will critique Aorus as well and MSI at the same time. I think for X399 boards, their BIOS needs a bit of an upgrade. They're still using the same preface and interface with the same options as their budget boards. I'd like to see more descriptions in the BIOS. I'd like to see more intricate settings. I mean, for example, the Zenith Extreme, that's got negative load line calibration. They're taking that thing up to the next level 
So they're implementing the better features, but they're also working on that by providing a better interface to utilize those features. Of course, ASRock make a solid device, but I feel like out of the four manufacturers here, ASUS just nail it when it comes to getting the BIOS right. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Let me know in the comment section below if you have an X399 motherboard, which one did you go with and why? Or if you want to get an X399 motherboard, or even if you can't afford one, which would you get? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And this little 40 mil fan here, I feel sorry for him. He, he tried, but he just didn't make it. He was the little 40 mil fan that couldn't. And also big thanks to PCB Way for sponsoring out today's video. I'll put the link for their website in the description below and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. When you're buying an X399 motherboard, X399999. Um, okay, and then yeah, so, okay. Awesome, awesome, okay, awesome. X399. <laughs> lastly, okay, lastly, lastly, lastly. Welcome back to Tech Yesterday, and in this studio, we've got a ambient temperature of 23 degrees C. That stands for Celsius, if you didn't know. Not Fahrenheit. Not that filthy Fahrenheit metric that you guys use over in the US. Nein! That's what the Germans would say if they heard it. <laughs>